Hi friends, today we're doing Unit 5, Lesson 4, Reflection and Mirrors. We're going to start by going over some of the key vocabulary words you'll be hearing in today's reading. Our first word is angle, a slant, the space or shape formed when two lines or two surfaces meet in one place, the corner of something with straight sides. Our next word is concave, curving inward, shaped like the inside of a bowl. Our next word is convex, rounded or curving outward, shaped like the outside of a bowl. And our last word is transmitted, sent, passed along, or spread through a material. We are now going to move into today's reading. The next morning, both men were up bright and early, each one looking forward to a day of fishing. Fishing had become one of their most cherished pastimes, and they both enjoyed fishing for stripped bass. They had a favorite fishing spot on the banks of the Hudson River, where Samuel arrived first. There, an old, rickety, or wobbly pier jutted out into the cool, lapping water. Nearby, a row of silver birch trees provided just the right amount of shade. There was also a picnic table. Alfie always accompanied them and frequently scared the fish away by jumping off the pier into the water. Hey, you beat me to it, shouted Jack as he walked toward Samuel. Samuel was already on the pier, intently focused on attaching a large, juicy bloodworm to the hook on the end of his fishing line. Alfie was stretched out, enjoying the sun and the gentle breeze that was blowing across the Hudson River Valley. Just got here myself, yelled back Samuel. I hear the fish are jumping right into the line. Well, they'll miss your line for sure, bellowed Jack. Then he laughed loudly to himself. Samuel smiled at his friend and shook his head. If you continue to yell like a wild bear, you'll scare away every living creature, including the fish, said Samuel. Ah, the fish can't hear me, retorted Jack. For several minutes, the two men were silent. Samuel finished attaching the worm to the hook on the end of his line. Then he cast his line out into the smooth, glass-like surface of the Hudson River and plunked himself down on the edge of the pier. Going back to what we were talking about yesterday about light waves, said Samuel, you know that when a light wave hits an object, three things can happen. The light can be transmitted or passed through the object. The light can also be reflected or bounced back off that object, or the light can be absorbed or soaked up into it. This is determined by the type of objects that the light wave hits. Sometimes the light does a combination of these things. Hmm, Jack responded. Take reflection, for example, continued Samuel eagerly. Most of the light that reaches our eyes is reflected light. You see, apart from objects that produce their own light, such as the sun or a light bulb, all other objects are visible because light waves from a source bounce off them and into our eyes, explained Samuel. If you recall, Samuel Van Lumen, I did go to school. For most of the time, we were in the same class, said Jack somewhat grumpily. I remember learning about bioluminescent creatures, such as lightning bugs. If I recall correctly, they produce their own light. Yes, exclaimed Samuel, laughing as he spoke. It seems that as my eyes begin to fail me, I appreciate even more the things I am able to see. The science of light is really quite fascinating. I'm sure it is, shouted Jack. However, I hope you're not going to talk all day. That's why you never catch any fish, you know. Samuel smiled at Jack and continued to talk anyway. You see, when light hits a surface, some of the light bounces off the surface. It is the light that bounces off the surface that we call reflected light. Most objects reflect sunlight. In fact, you are reflecting sunlight right now, Jack. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to see you, exclaimed Samuel. Now that my eyes... Let me see a whole lot these days, he added. Jack glanced over at Elfie, who was staring at his reflection in the still water. Jack laughed and said, look at the way the smooth water is reflecting a perfect image of Elfie, just like a mirror. At that moment, Jack stood up to check on his line. Hmm, I thought I sensed something nibbling, but there's nothing there, he said. When I was young, Samuel mused, I often wondered why we're able to see our reflection in some things, but not in others. Jack laughed. We wondered a lot of things when we were young. I still wonder some of those things. Do you remember, asked Samuel, when our third grade teacher, Mr. Benson, brought a mirror and a piece of wood into class to explain how light is reflected off a surface? He showed us that when the surface of an object is perfectly smooth and shiny, like that of a mirror, light rays hit all parts of the surface of that object at the same angle. Therefore, light rays reflected by that object bounce back off it at the same angle and produce a clear and accurate reflection. Jack nodded. I remember Mr. Benson well. However, Samuel continued, when the surface of an object is not perfectly smooth and shiny, 
Like that of a piece of wood, light rays hit different parts of it at different angles. Therefore, some light rays are absorbed by that object and some are reflected by that object at different angles, though it does not produce a reflection. Mr. Benson was one of my favorite teachers, said Jack. Yep, he was one of my favorite teachers too, agreed Samuel. I remember him explaining that because they are smooth, mirrors reflect almost all the light that hits them. Have you noticed that crazy dog of yours? Jack asked. He's still staring at his reflection in the smooth, shiny surface of the water. He does, that explained Samuel. Both men laughed loudly. The sound of their laughter seemed to act as a trigger for Alfie. He looked at them, wagged his tail, and then jumped headlong into the river. Don't go too far out there, Alfie, yelled Samuel as if he was talking to a young child. The two men stood up to check their lines and then returned to their chairs. Samuel continued to keep a watchful eye on Alfie whose head was just visible above the water. He noticed that the water was now full of ripples, making the reflections in the water wavy and distorted. I remember that day John O'Connor brought a really old mirror into class, recalled Jack. It was his grandmother's mirror, and we couldn't see ourselves that well in it. Mr. Benson compared it to a modern mirror, the back of which was coated with a silvery material. The modern mirror could reflect almost all the light that hit it. Yes, said Samuel, and Mr. Benson told us that most mirrors have flat surfaces and are called plane mirrors. Mr. Benson also taught us about two other types of mirrors that have curved surfaces instead of flat surfaces, concave and convex, recalled Samuel. Oh, I remember, said Jack, we had to draw two portraits of ourselves. One portrait was a concave image and the other was a convex image. I remember that I borrowed my mother's silver spoons and brought them to school. That's right, exclaimed Samuel excitedly. That experiment was a lot of fun. Jack went on. Now let me see. Concave and convex mirrors reflect light in such a way that they alter or change the view we see in them. A concave mirror curves inward and produces a smaller upside down image of an object, but only if it is a certain distance away from the viewer. Yes, added Samuel, but if an object is very close to a concave mirror, its reflection will be upright and magnified. Do you remember how Mr. Benson showed us how you could put a pencil point right up into the cave of the spoon and see it upright and magnified? Jack nodded and continued. Convex mirrors curve outward and always produce a smaller upright image as when you look into the convex side of the spoon. Point the right spoon in the image. Explain that a convex mirror bulges outward and makes it easier to see the surrounding area. Samuel laughed out loud. Did you actually learn something in school, Jack Audrey? I seem to recall that you were always talking, especially when Mr. Benson was talking. Oh, I learned a thing or two, protested Jack, and I'll have you know. Suddenly Jack leapt out of his chair. Jumping jelly means I think I've caught a fish, he yelled. Almost at once, Jack began to wrestle with his fishing pole. It's a big one, Samuel, screeched just as he struggled. Jack struggled to hold on to his fishing pole and not fall headfirst into the river. If you stand still, you'll stand a better chance of reeling it in, advised Samuel. Stand still, stand still, shrieked Jack as he battled with the creature on the end of the line. This fish is the size of a whale. How am I supposed to stand still? For several minutes, Jack appeared to do a dance on the end of the pier with a fishing pole. Finally, Samuel had the good sense to take a closer look at the creature that Jack was attempting to catch. Hold on a minute, Jack. Stop wrestling with that line. You've hooked Alfie by the collar. The poor dog is trying to free himself, and you keep trying to reel him in, laughed Samuel. That darn dog should be banned from, com from coming fishing with us. He's more trouble than he's worth, roared Jack. Hold on, hold on. Let me get my camera, shouted Samuel. I want to get a photograph of the day Jack Audrey hooked himself a live Springer Spaniel. Moments later, having been unhooked by Jack, an extremely wet Elfie stood happily wagging his tail beside Jack, while Samuel busied himself taking photographs of the two of them. Get away from me, you darn dog, muttered Jack as Elfie shook himself dry. Samuel laughed aloud as he continued to capture photographic images of his two best friends. If you don't put that camera away right now, you'll be as wet as that silly dog, announced Jack. Okay, laughed Samuel. Time for lunch, I think. The two friends shared some chicken and coleslaw while Elfie lay in the sun to finish drying off. I'm glad I had my camera with me, Samuel said between mouthfuls as he arranged the parts of his camera on the picnic blanket. Do you know that some cameras contain plain mirrors that make it impossible to see the image you are about to photograph? 
Yeah, well, you certainly didn't need to record that image of me, hooking Alfie, grumbled Jack, offering a piece of chicken to Alfie. Samuel laughed as he began to pack up the picnic basket. Well, you've obviously forgiven him. Did I tell you that we are taking Amy to the fair tomorrow? We? exclaimed Jack. Yep, that was the deal, explained Samuel. I told her that if she made me some chocolate cake, I'd take her to the fair. Me too, shouted Jack, a little less grumpily. You're going to eat some cake, aren't you? Samuel yelled back. Well, okay then. But you're not going to make me go on those bumper cars again, are you? asked Jack. No, said Samuel with a smile. This time, I thought we'd try the House of Mirrors. You may now move on to Unit 5, Lesson 4, Google Form.